this week we've decided that we're going to try and get like into the into an era best player of an era so we're going to start with howard kendall mark one because we can't go back any further because i wasn't born um you just can't remember and i was only dinky and it was shit and we want to get away from the current shit. yeah so and we don't know what we're going to say honestly we haven't told nope. you that so if we both say the same we'll have to choose a reserve have one in reserve okay go on then. so the the best player of the howard kendall era mark one in your opinion baz was i'm not going to say it yeah what i'm going to say is yeah go on this is really difficult because <coughs> yeah, obviously there was so many brilliant players yeah. and you could have made that you could have made a case for probably most of them mm. for being the best at uh, what they did yeah. within that era but i'm going just purely on quality here mm. and the best player i think of that era was trevor stephen oh. and why i've chosen trevor steve listen i could have gone personal favorite would have been agent because i actually mm. love agent but uh, trevor stephen had everything mm. absolutely everything great in the air good pace about him skillful score goals never really went missing you know he was he was up and down that line with gary stevens and i just think for what he was played up front a few times when we needed the emergency striker he was just absolutely brilliant it's to me it's an interesting shout i mean i've got a 1985 shirt with number seven on the back so you know there you go. i i love tricky trev mm. brilliant player i was actually going to say somebody and then i thought at the last minute no okay. it's somebody else mm. and i will reveal who the person i was gonna say is and i'll, I'll tell you whether it's the one i, right. I would say and i'll I be honest going to it. say kevin sheedy he was my first thought Bec for technique well just because no not only just no, no no he was a tremendous footballer his set pieces got us yeah. out of the shit loads of times yeah he could score goals take pens mm. He had a little bit of devil in there as well. Oh yeah, he had a bit of everything about him. But then at the last minute, a light bulb went on my head, and I thought, no, it's got to be this person. And who do you think that person is? Never Southall. It's Never Southall. He was me reserve. <laughs> he was me reserve because he's quite. You know why I nearly, you know why I nearly went for him, and you may. Yeah. This might be your reason. I nearly went for him because I thought he was the best player in the world in, the in position. his position yeah. and obviously Trevor Stephen wasn't so mm. but I chose Trevor Stephen I basically went for an outfield player but Neville Southall to me one of the best ever to play the game certainly in the era that I've seen um, in world football I'm talking about but for me at the time at his peak was easily the best goalkeeper in the world yeah and that's why I've sort of gone for him because at the end of the day if you're talking about a whole era you need a level of consistency and when when uh, Neville Southall wasn't in goal it was pretty much the whole of the 86 season but it was the whole of the 86 season pretty much wasn't it no. but but it was nearly all of the 86 not he, all of it he got injured in February 86 well, the, the so it was the important important part. bit sorry yeah. important bit it was the well to be it was the key to the business end exactly. because we were still involved yeah. so in it was the business end yeah. of it and I think that showed I think that showed why we never uh, won won the double yeah. that season. I think we would have yeah. if never been playing. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. It wasn't for fucking. We'd have definitely won one. Stupid pitch in Ireland or yeah. something. So exactly. Um, down road. So, but it, it was just, I suppose he he was the back help the backbone and what the club was. And all those other players were not. I'm not saying they were all interchangeable. They weren't. But if a, if one player at a time was out, we normally had adequate uh, replacements. Whether you know, Kevin Richardson come in and done a job anyway, Alan Harper come in and done a job, Adrian Eve come in and done a job. Mm -hmm. um, we always had we always had players there and thereabouts, but with Nev, he was pretty much irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. And I just think that I think I think knowing that you've got a player of his ability in goal for you gives the rest of the team almost a licence to push forward and 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 um, and go and win games. And also, uh, you know, leadership qualities as well. He brought, you know, he was first into training, last out of training, just 
he run the dressing room. He was it was so much about him. When there was a lot of sort of big characters in that dressing room who, who sort of I pro I would imagine pushed out their personas a lot more than Nev did. I just think Nev was didn't have to do that. I just think he was just like his own man, comfortable comfortable being who he was and it didn't matter and I, and I, th I think at the end of the day you only have to look at his uh, his repertoire of saves that he made that he had no right to make you know that Falco Falco in the against Spurs you know nearest rivals in 85 you know that save at 2-1 things like that I think he just he just he was the key, key man he was just the key man for me and I think that's why Go Down has been for me the most important yeah, he, listen, like I just said, he was the best goalkeeper that probably I've ever seen. He was incredible, certainly at Everton, without a shadow, without putting the world at that, that, that time. Just unbelievable. There was games that he just winged on his own. When strikers went through, you were surprised when he scored. That's what he was like. Mm. Um, such a big presence. Seeing him make saves in games that... It, the, some people have hit it. Remember Greg Down, Coventry, and it, we didn't even win anything, but we beat them 1 0 and Coventry scored. And Greg yeah, Down hit a free kick and put his arms up because he thought it was in, and Southall's come from nowhere and tipped it over the bar. He saved the hardest penalty I've ever seen from Brian Kilcline, who's just well it and he kept it out. And that was in the season that we didn't win anything. Mm -hmm. But I think, like you say, 85, unbelievable. 86, he was brilliant. And he just went and caught a cross on Lansdowne Road and landed, and that was it, his ankle was done. Bobby Mims done well, you know, he won the league at Blackburn, he wasn't a shy goalkeeper, but he done he come in and done well, but he wasn't Neville Southall, mm. he wasn't that presence. And I think other people got confident. When Ned was in, the yeah. strikers were in his confidence. And it showed the next season, Bobby Mims started the season because Nev wasn't ready, but Nev was back for the business end and yeah. we won the league. Yeah. And that was the, the key difference. We didn't win it the year before. We won it a year later, and it, like you say, he was just you'd see strikers go through and shrink because it was him. I had the pleasure of training with him at Everton, and he just welly shots, and he just catch it with one hand and throw it back, and you'd just be like, you fucking just welly that you say talk, and you're saving it and throwing it back. But other keepers, because Bobby Mims was there training with Bobby Mims and Fred Barber, remember it, and them, and they'd be in, you'd be curling them round them and leather and past them, and he'd just go back to you, back to, and you were like, no wonder like top class strikers like sh like physically shrink yeah. with him you know I know Ian Rush had his fair share of goals against him but other times Rush would go through and he'd, he'd save it and you'd be like that was a goal without him that was a goal and he'd done it to every striker he'd done it to me and you what's have done some retro rewatches and we've seen him and we've like been yeah. laughing at the saves that he made you know the very the famous little montage at Chef Wed when yeah. we won the three saves in that which are unbelievable yeah, and, and then even later in his career, ninety five at Wembley, the double save from Scholes yeah. and stuff like that, just unbelievable goalkeeper. Had everything like you say, Paddy. First in, last out, great, great fella. You know, straight would have you no problem, no problem bollocking yeah. And that what we don't see now. I mean, Jordan Pickford's got a bit of it. He doesn't mind giving it up, but Southall, fuck me, he'd grab you and. You didn't want to mess with him, and, and Everton had a lot of those characters, mm. which probably the reason why he was so good at that time is that the other team followed him. He was, he was instrumental in everything. Can I just? He did. Can I just? This he was my pick. He was man. yours, yeah. Sorry, yeah. my pick. Do you tell me about Trevor Stephen? Do you tell me about Trevor <laughs> Stephen? <laughs> Trevor Stephen, like I say, he came obviously coming from Burnley. Liverpool wanted him, and and we got him, and he come in, and he was a little bit hit and missed the first mm. season come in I think he found it difficult stepping up from he played for Burnley actually at Anfield the year before we signed him in, in the League Cup I think they got to the, the semi-final played Liverpool and he played really well in Liverpool but keeping an eye on him and our Kendall pounce like and come in and he was a little bit as you do as the players who step up do but 84-85 season no, sorry 83-84 season when he got in properly and he got his head down and we ended up getting to two cup finals he was just fantastic and you know we've seen him at Wembley when he he threw the cross in for the old Andy Gray goal um, and he was great because he could go inside outside Trevor Stephen it was it wasn't always outside if they showed him inside he'd come in put a few in with his left foot he could play off the left hand side as well and like I said he could play through the middle mm. you know he was a, 
it's really difficult choosing players actually from that side because when I think back, I just I loved all of them. Absolutely loved. Them. I don't know whether it was because I was a kid as well, but I loved every player. I loved Alan Harper and Richardson. They they hardly play. You know, well, Richo did. Alan Harper was in and out. You know, players like that. we have like people like Paul Wilkinson who didn't. You know, and Zach Goodison when we they beat us Grimsby and we fucking mulled them. We had about thirty five shots and they got a free kick in the last minute and he scored. Uh, then he beat us one 0 and we went and bought him. And he was a lad that had come in. Score a couple of goals and then he'd be back out the team. No, mm. and it was just like, oh, he's not playing because Aiden each back or Graham Sharp or whatever. And that was what was great about that side. But when you go through that side, Peter Reid, what a footballer, what a midfield player. He was Bracewell, one of the most gifted midfielders because he had everything. You can go through it, Gary Steve, you know, it is. You, you look now, it actually makes you quite sad when you look at this team now that there's not many alike mm. and there's not many who you'd want with you in a battle but that Everton side you'd want them all with you because they all dug in but saying that mate they came from I was at Goodison yeah. when we drew nil nil with Coventry in the aisle fucking cousins came down and people it was Kendall's mm. out and all that and just shows you Andy Gray was a was a bit of a, a key turning yeah. point in it but he was there when the Coventry things came down it was like six weeks after that but once that thing turned and mm. we got on a run. Players, but the characters, though, isn't it? Like you said, but, the, yeah. the characters came out in the yeah. end. The true characters came out. Yeah. At first, it might have just been the lack of, you know, not football ability, but confidence and things like that. But mm. there was always characters there with that. Yeah, I, yeah. I love Trevor Stephen. I, I just think he he is one of the most underrated um, English players that yeah, we've had definitely. in the last thirty years. He, he I just loved. I, it's weird with me. I don't know whether it's because it's like out of sight, out of mind, but I've got no, I've got no time for Graham Sharp whatsoever. I think he's a dickhead, if, if I'm honest. Um, I haven't met him after. I, I just think, I, I just don't like him, and it's soured my. You know when people say don't never meet your heroes. Yeah, for some people yeah. it's true. Mm. Some people it's true. Trevor Stephen, I've I've met Trevor Stephen, I, 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 and I've I, you know after football and I've been in his company and. Um, I spoke to him. And how have you found him? I thought I found him I found him very a very sort of intelligent, sort of down to earth fella who was slightly rem- I think he's slightly removed from the Everton thing because of, of the other teams he played yeah. for. Um but still, you know uh, you know, we went into like being an agent and stuff, mm. didn't he? And um very intelligent and knows the game and and I, I remember speaking to him about a few things at the time and um, not really to do Everton, more, more to do with like podcasts and stuff that I was doing, and he was, you know, he was interested in talking to me about them. But I, I, I think there's that, that, so that creates that like wonderment that you keep in your head about a, about a better person rather than thinking about how they are. I mean, I would love, I would love to remember certain plays about how how they were on the football pitch. But once you get to know them, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's nothing better in the world than meeting a footballer and finding out that his fucking boss, like, I. I've been dead lucky. I, I, I played with Nev, and I had a, a day with Nev, and it was a fucking. Oh, sc- Nev! It was a scream. It was a scream from beginning to end. Mm. Watson, uh, Agent Eve, all great fellas. Agent Eve, I mean, I, I sat up drinking with Agent Eve and, and Watson till six in the morning. <laughs> Wacky one I don't like. Well, that's fair and enough. I've met him. I've, I've, he's a bit aloof. Yeah, he's a bit aloof. He's a bit. Um, I think if he. Tr- I think. Yeah, he, but he I sat with them all day. Quite guarded. Yeah, though, and he was he was sound and yeah. um, and Nev's the same. And Agent Ethan, we've spoke to Inchy since, yeah, and yeah. you've got to you no know, like speak to him and stuff. He's 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 dead on the level. But and but Trevor, he, you know, he's one of them where he sort of he left the club at a time where uh, you know it was when he left the club. It was at that moment where we needed those players, him and Gary Stevens, and the, I don't know whether that's that. Not not saying that soured the relationship, it just it was a little bit felt like a bit unfulfilled. Yeah, I think the problem was he stayed Gary Stevens went. You're right, Tom. Tom's just asking about it at the window. Um Gary Stevens went and then obviously the European bands then they mm. just come in with some shiny money and mm. and we probably as a club we probably should have done more to keep them. Yeah. To but whether the law or maybe, maybe we should have done more to fight the European band, maybe. Well, maybe, yeah. But um, Trevor Stephen, it was obviously well known 
that he was Rangers wanted them and the last few games obviously at Wembley and the, the 89 Cup final people got on the pitch and was yeah, you know, having a go with him saying he wasn't trying and maybe maybe that soured it a bit but for the years that he was there he was fantastic for us and just such a great player but I don't I just remember the, the aloofness when I was at Everton it was like what maybe I don't like Watson because he just kicked shit out of me on the training pitch and he was a bit of a he was a bit of a loof, a bit of loof. Like some of them you meet now on the great. I mean, Derek Monfield, you love Dex. He's never, he's never been any difference. He's always the same. Nev's, yeah. Nev's never been any difference. And some of them are. Some of them are guarded, and, and you have to be. And and, and yeah, when he trusts mm. you, they can't. You, the, of the course, guard drops well, and no, that, you don't know you do. That's what it's about. Trevor Stephen, I can't. I, I just remember him. I remember him as a player, and I remember him from training and in training. He just finish and go. So he was quite removed mm. almost, but he, I remember he was one of those, like, suppose you'd call it like a thinking football. Yeah, he was in the one of them, and he had other interests outside of it as well, so he was like that. But I remember he had a fucking boss car, and he had a red yeah, he, 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 Capri at right, first, and he had to get the yeah. He, he, um, he strikes strike me as a man that probably, you know, saved all his money and invested and, mm. and made, made more money out of it. I think his, I think his Everton career sort of petered out, though, unfortunately, as well, when, and maybe he lost. Maybe stayed at Everton too long. Maybe it petered out because of that. Um, maybe she was probably gone the year before. Yeah, yeah, you know, but but you know, he he, the, his football and ability. I I my favorite goal he scored and yours. I mean, there's two. The, I I'll, I love when he scored against Bayern Munich. Oh. I, I love the celebration. I just love him running away, going like that, like as in it's done, lads. We're done. We're through. And obviously, you know, in, in the final. Um, but the, but the one I love is is against Sunderland mm. when he comes in off the right, takes the ball, takes like gets control as he goes past the defender and then just smashes it top in and it's just like they are all the elements that we miss as missing the game with wingers mm. now. Wingers now have just become this contrived player who just plays a wide. Mm. Um, he was like a wide, he was a wide midfielder really. That that was what was good about. I mean even the. The winner, Leicester, the Andy Gray running into the post off his head and bollocking Steve Lynx. Trevor Stevens, the one that flicks it on because he played up front that day yeah. with Gray. And that was what he brought. He brought everything. good I in think, the year. I think, do you know what? I would say the, the, the person I would I would say in the last 10 years who reminded me of is, but the, they've got a couple of things removed from each other's game. Mm. It's probably Beckham. But, mm. but he wasn't, he was quicker than Beckham. Mm. Much quicker than Beckham. And Beckham was a better crosser than mm. and, a, and a dead ball, but I just 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 that like that old fashioned winger in in the modern game just mm. it doesn't exist anymore. And he just he could like as you say he could he could mix it. He, he could throw boss balls in the box. He could he, you know he he, he could he, he just had so much about him. But he just um, he epitomised that era of a lad coming from somewhere like Burnley and then stepping up and he goes to the World Cup at eighty six and. No, he's, he's setting goals with left, right, and sitting. You know, uh, it wasn't meant to be. It's a ridiculous series. I mean, when you think about it, right? Yeah. When you think about the '86 England team, right? It was built round all these fucking no marks. He'd done nothing, yeah. and you got Everton players sitting there, and because of injuries and stuff, the Everton players got themselves in the team. Not all of them. Fucking Manfield was left at fucking home. Yeah. Took fucking Alvin Martin instead. Terry Fenner. You fucking finished twelfth, I think, yeah. that season. Terry Fenner. And Terry fucking yeah. Fenner. Left Manfield. Talk about talk about North South divide. Yeah. That's when it was a fucking proper North South divide. A joke. And in the end, but in the end, we got you know it was Reedy and Stevens and Lineker and Trevor Steve and all playing Bracewell and they're all playing and you know the when Lineker got his hat like there's one goal and I think the all the all the, the, all the Everton goal, players yeah. and you had that when you had pride fucking for England yeah. but um but uh, but you can understand why he left and you know we went on to play for Rangers had all the money then and were in the Champions League and that's where it was that's when a lot of English players were up there and then he, and then again I think showing the uh, the intelligence of him he went to Marseille, Marseille and yeah. did really well at Marseille mm -hmm. um, it's one of them isn't it you look I look back at that them era and just think I, I, I hate I hate the way Sky have changed it I hate the way it's gone through Sky but if Sky had to be a thing mm. I wish Sky would have come in 10 years earlier yeah. for all the footage you know because I think if you do add all that footage the proper footage yeah. the way it is he would be one of those players that people would revere. People would go, "What a footballer well, he was!" And go back because it's did. You it, get the great well, foot. We listen. We sit looking for. Well, them, it's interesting we? now. I but, mean, we've just 
um, we've just put we've just helped put together this Everton team 85 to uh, 84 to 87 for Pez mm. and the lad right the lad's like because I was on on him because this uh, you know anything about Pez you can you can mess about with the teams and there's a there's a set of lads who've brought out this classic teams and Everton weren't in it and I was like why the fuck aren't Everton in it because he was shy. Stour Bucharest 86 fucking team if that's not fucking rubbing salt in the fucking wound I don't know what it is and I was like that when are you putting an Everton team and he's like oh, 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 oh. I went are you putting an Everton team and in the end he was like alright we'll put an Everton team and he's actually put it in just for us like giving us the fucking thing but he was back all the time going well, what about this player what, how good was this player and I'm like how do you not know but they don't know they don't that's know the thing it's not, like yeah. the lot the, in the end the kid was like I've been watching videos of you so you're a fucking boss mm. and it was like it's like we're like the lost team of yeah, the 80s yeah. because it, we, we are, in fact we are the well, lost there's team a film coming out because <laughs> because loads of our footage went missing because mm. like TV companies were on strike oh, and, see, and they were, there wasn't deals in place and there's grainy footage that was Everton's footage and now live, like listen the Liverpool team they won, they won, won European Cups and that's why they are the way they are. But it's all, it's all like loads of their, I bet you loads of their league games just have just gone I've missing. Gone, but it doesn't they? matter because they've got all the it's European fair. footage. I mean, we've got the European Cup and it's got fine, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter because it's not the same. But those league games have all gone. So there's, there's like a lost generation. The problem from what one of the things for me and it pisses me off is the eighth there was a the strike in the eighty six season when we had Gary Lineker yeah. for the first five months of the season. And we were amazing, and he was amazing, and there's loads yeah. of brilliant goals that aren't seen, that they're just well, not there, and it's like someone must have them. Well, do the thing. Oh, the yeah. clubs recorded. Well, every so, so well. who told me? Someone told me that BT. I've got. Oh no, it was Johnny from Sky. Didn't he come in? Told he us. He not. said, "Sky, I've got all the footage, all of it." They own all the footage, like mm. anything that's like they've got it all, but there's, there's not, they don't do with anything with it. And it's like, and I, I've been saying for years, I know I haven't brought a DVD out not long ago of like '87 and '85, but it's like a game here, then some interviews and a game there, and it's just like, and this was another thing we, you know, when we've done the retros, we've like, when we get done for this, but like we, I've spoke to people and they're like, no, because everyone owns the footage, but nobody owns the footage, yeah. because and it's all. A, because of all the shit that went on, no one truly has the rights. And ev like we spoke to Everton about it, and they were like, "We don't, we can't really put stuff out because it's not ours, but it's not theirs." And it's like it's all stuck in this fucking no man's land. And you're like, all you want to do is for someone to just compile a fucking match by match like thing. No, mm. I was dead excited. I mean, when they brought the eighty five, then I was like, oh, "It's gonna be boss, this," and it ended up being a shitty like talking heads video. And I just wanted a full season it's review every, every game. game, and they could, they didn't. But I bet you, but you're right. I bet you it's all out there. But if you sourced it all, I bet you if you went to like individual clubs, they'd probably have their own story. Like it pisses me off that Everton don't have like catalogs of all the games, yeah. like online. But they just say, well, we've got them all, but we can't put them all online because that takes up bandwidth and bandwidth costs money and mm. blah blah blah. I understand. Put them all on fucking YouTube then. Get, yeah. I'll fucking do it. I'll go and work for you and put it all on YouTube. Catalog it and put it on commentate over and just give me a job. Uh, let me and Bass just run run it all. Um, YouTube no, just put it all on YouTube yeah, and just yeah. just get. You know. Anyway, that's a different story. But it's annoying that that Everton do feel like the lost team of the eighties. You yeah. know what I mean? I know. Listen, I know when you look back, the success it seems fleeting now, and we know why the success is fleeting. But it does feel like we are just that lost team. Because we've got the thing that we do, we just, and it's annoying because people like Trevor. If I went up to a kid now, where I went to Trevor Stephen, he wouldn't have a fucking no. clue. He, even maybe some Ever Evertonians, young Evertonians, wouldn't have a clue. No. Like the, I speak to the kid, this kid again, and someone Kevin. He went, "What was Kevin Sheedy?" I went, I went, "Kevin Sheedy was the best free kick taker in the world," <laughs> and I'm not being dramatic about mm. that. Okay, there might have been a few out there in Italy or Yugoslavia and that kind of you know, a couple of yeah. You know, I said, but he was the fucking absolute best. Scored goals in the World Cup, scored goals in Cup winner Cup final. He was fucking brilliant. He kicked from anyway. Take he was his left foot was fucking hell. I said it was amazing. I said our goal he was the best in the world. I'm not being dramatic when I say these things. I said Lineker, you know the 86 he said he was more sought after player in Europe and we signed him and then we sold him to Barcelona. When he and he says he didn't even want to fucking go, and it's like forty goals. It's like these things, and you just go. People are like, 
No, don't don't know anything because about that. Because of the sky thing. No, I know it is. Saying. But it's not just the sky. No, it's not. It's no, not, but no, saying, it's about the t- yeah, t- It's about the TV. But deal. I'm saying if that would have landed ten years no, earlier, of course. Right, then all this would have been at that time. Everton would have been out no, there, being everywhere. But it's really? even worse that it's even worse from the fucking these things that Everton <coughs> didn't go anywhere. Mm. I mean, I know why, but at the end of the day, there's other clubs not so far away who, even though they 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 moved on, didn't they? But we just didn't. We didn't for some reason. We didn't move on. Mm. We were the mo- ones it, it hurt most, and maybe I don't know whether that maybe whether it was a mental f- thing. But we didn't move. This, I, I'll be honest, right? This is why I don't like Sir Philip Carter, and can't I can't take to all this stand stuff. And I know people have different opinions than me, but I I can't have him because as far as I'm concerned, he never fought to keep us in Europe. He mm. just went, yes, Margaret, because he was fucking mates with her. Mm. I won't go into that. But he never fought, and I can't have him for that. Mm. He re- he wasted the biggest opportunity Everton have ever had because of someone else's doing. And then what made it worse was we never reacted. They reacted. Mm. They went out and bought the best three players in the in yeah, the land. Yeah. The year, the you know the year the year after we won the league, did that fucking yeah. hell? It was coming to the end of the season. They already had all them sewn off for the next season. Yeah. We just stood there twiddling our thumbs, going, "What should we do next? Well, we need a new manager. Yeah, just get just give it to Colin." And then we went. Who oh, should we buy? And it was to be fair, we bought Tony Cotty, who was quite short after. Let's not get into that area. No, but I'm just saying. No, no, we but, did, it, it, but you're right. Know. We didn't. We didn't. I don't think we'd done enough to fight it. We should have gone and got an injunction or whatever. We should have gone and said, "We haven't done anything. We're not being bombed. Yeah. It's, it's wrong and blah de blah." Or we should have signed an agreement that when it was back open. We were the first we team anything. back we just, in. We just that's, what, that's what the clamour was for. Yeah. The clamour was at the time. You remember at the time, yeah. people were saying if they get back in, Everton need to go back in first because they're the team that's been hurt by it. We twice we lost mm-hmm. out on it. But um, but you're right in terms of investments and everything. We should have built. You build when you're strong. You don't build when you you weaken because everybody else. If you you get stronger, you keep it. You keep building and building and building at the position of strength, and that's how you maintain yeah. an area. I, of I mean, don't get me wrong. Ultimately, the European ban did for Liverpool, Liverpool as well, because yes, they won in mm-hmm. 80, 88 and, and they won in eighty five and couldn't defend it. Yeah, they? but what I'm saying is that oh, so, no, some of the league, the but also no, yeah, the league as well. They, they just, yeah, they, yeah. Just, uh, they won a couple more, but they yeah. won out of steam, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, yeah, ultimately, but. You know that uh, you know. I just think there's so many t- players that we look back on with so, such fondness and and adore them, and other people just don't even know who they are. Don't know who they are. Trevor Stephen, you wouldn't know. You don't. Uh, 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 someone wouldn't know Trevor Stephen is because he's not on telly anywhere. You know, mm. he, he probably did a little bit afterwards, but he's not that kind of fella. He doesn't come across giving it the big I am. I won this and I won that. He's not like that whatsoever. You could probably walk past him in the streets and he wouldn't. You wouldn't know who he was. Whereas all the Liverpool players went on telly and Hanson and stuff and Lawrence and they projected that image of we've done this and we've done that. And our players never really did that. Mm. Really. You know, the only one I would I would really say did that was probably Reedy, but he, that's because he went into management and mm. but like everyone else stayed quite insular. I mean Graham Sharp, local, doesn't doesn't go on national telly very often, so it's so he's seen as, you know, uh, I, I don't know whether that may be bad because it's funny because it might be something to do with the affinity. Graham Sh- uh, Andy Gray obviously did, mm. but people then go, "Oh, he's not in it. He's not ever Tony because he's like giving it the commentary in the Liverpool games, giving it the you know all that." But that's because that's how he got to where he was. I heard Leon Osman a few weeks ago on stage, and Darren Giff was asking about the telly and the radio. Was, you know, you're never off it, and he went, "Oh, no, no, no. and he said, "He said I said we, and I've been told not to," and that's because I, I like to think that Evertonians. Can't help but say we or players that uh, play for us. Well, if but, 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 but the idea yeah, is yeah. Liverpool players go, Liverpool ex players go on the telly, don't say we, but a fucking cuddling up to them yeah. anyway. Oh, God. So, well, that's right, it. isn't it? It, it? it is mad that those players, because you'll know, you know, players from other clubs who are nowhere near as good as our players, and it's like their names are like Rivi, and you're going, how oh, are they like getting talked all like that? And our yeah. team it was like <laughs> amazing. No one speaks about them. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck it's it's on? it's perception, isn't it? Rodney fucking Marsh, by the way. It's perception. 
It's <laughs> nobody matches now. It's perception though, isn't it? It's this idea. Well, it's fucking people like Jimmy. Now you've got people like Jermaine Jenis and fucking and Charlie Nicholas. Well, he was a, he was a, he was a, he was a never be, wasn't he? Oh well, that's what. But no, well, no, no, no. And you've got fucking people like Jermaine Jenis, and you've got people like well, you know what? Don't mind Jermaine Jenis as Jermaine. much as fucking Danny Murphy, oh, shot, who took right. Jamie Redknapp, who lifted trophies wearing a suit every time. Yeah. Fucking hell. Well, that's the thing. But I'll that done my head in at the weekend him and fucking you know our summarisers mm. Jamie freaking how's Jamie Redden up summarising Terry Henry gives a shite if, if Sky need them for well, we've gone away from this haven't we we've gone away from give them remember, remember when Sky first thing. started and every match would have like a pun you know you'd have someone in the studio from Everton and someone from the opposite mm. time or whatever it was always fair yeah. and then and then I, I think it might have been because of the whole keys and keys thing because it was like, no, we need a team that we can rely on, and mm. that you know what I mean, like never leaves the circle of trust, no, yeah. sort of thing. That's probably what. Shite up. But then it's also going. Well, we want the best. It's also going. Like I mean, look at look at. I don't, we've gone madly off the tangent here. We'll but look at no, some people like Ian Wright. Ian Wright on every fucking channel. Like, yeah, but, yeah. but but then you've got someone like Sky. Don't want Gary Neville going on the BBC. They don't want him on the ITV. They don't want him on BT. They but want that's, that's okay, right? Because he's doing the games, and that's yeah. great. And he does the Monday night footy thing. With listen, I don't mind Jamie Carragher. People no, were no, about Carragher the no, other day in our commentary. I thought he was dead fair yeah. on the commentary the other day. And what listen, he I, says is right. About I want him. listen. Shite. I want people. I want people like Neville going on and calling our players I want, out. Yeah, and Carragher. I want them fucking yeah. calling. People and listen to that. It highlights it, right? No, and it's it, even better when footballers go, oh, it's terrible, they don't have a clue, and you think, you've, well, they've got to you, haven't they? The worst thing you can have as a, as a summariser, who would just, who just ask kiss. I don't, I once, I've got no issue with the likes of Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher, right? Because I've heard Carragher slate in Liverpool. Yeah. Right, but Jamie Redknapp doesn't say a word about them, good or bad, but he'll have a go at Everton. Doesn't say a word, you know, Danny Murphy, the exact same thing. Soon as you know, if you only have to put on the all there, Gerard and you're like you know, it's yeah, if Steven Gerard's not working at Liverpool, mm. fine, be a summariser. But he's at Liverpool now, so he shouldn't be anywhere near the telly. Um I talking about Everton or so regardless whether he's right about Everton or wrong, and I believe the other day he was probably mm. right about what he said about Everton. But he's employed by Liverpool Football Club, so he shouldn't yeah. have any opinion on Liverpool. Well, he shouldn't be a, he shouldn't be a contracted key fucking you summariser. Know, summariser. He, no. If he's brought in to do a game by game, European games, you have no problem. If he's coming in to do, you know, whoever no, he's brought him against to do... Juventus, great because he's been a great player, and you don't mind. But I just hate it. I just think for, and, and if it was like the if Sky go look the our team for this. For the four o'clock on a Sunday, Super Sunday, it's Jamie Redknapp and Terry Henry, right? No problem with that if that's the four o'clock game, yeah. right? But I don't want to see Jamie Redknapp, stupid fucking cotton woolhead, anywhere near Everton games that aren't a four o'clock on Super Sunday because he's a fucking. There you go, the debate has gone all debate any other business. <laughs> Debating now. <laughs> anyway, Trevor Stephen, yeah. yeah. No, I think you've just nailed it there. Is that for such an amazing team, it is like the forgotten team. It is kind of like, I've got my good way. Did you have any good players? And you're like, you should know. Well, do you know what, though? It's not, I'll be honest, it's not the only forgotten team, though. Let's be no, fair. No, no. Because. Yeah, but we're talking about us. I know we are. Not Nottingham I know, Forest but, fans. Well, I was going to say, no, but Nottingham Forest, and that's good. That we're, 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 And Aston Villa, by the way. But yeah, I was just about to say Aston Villa 82, they won a European mm. Cup. Uh, Forest won two European Cups and won the league. Back back. And, 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 and what was good about Forest is that film came out recently, mm. and there's a film coming about Everton soon. So hopefully that sort of. Boy, and I sent you the thing the other day, I was watching Top of the Pops 85. God. And uh, here we are, it was like 26, and then the next one they were like number 13, it was Boss. I was like, fucking hell, Everton! Everton in the chat! Me and my missus were just sitting there going, how depressing do we feel? We've just been beaten by fucking Burnley, right? And we're sitting there watching Top of the Pops from 1985 when all the music was boss, none of this shite now. Yeah. That's what she said. I'm, 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 I'm down with a bit of Kendrick. Mm. Um, Come on. Don't you know Kendrick Lamar? No, he's, awesome. he's not a tit! <laughs> he's sound! He's a breath. No, he's not. He's, that, a breath. he's not. That's, that's he's LeBron. Um, Kendrick's a breath. <laughs> Got yawn on his arm. That's why he was, that's why he, he was called 
Ken, Kendrick, but actually the Ken bits for Kenny Daglish. Yeah, but that's what his name was. And Lamar was just because he liked Lamar. That's who it was, basically. He just changed his name. I can't argue with that. He's got Yawn written on his ass. Yawn, uh, fair enough. Um, yeah, so what, seeing Everton in the charts, I was just like. I was thinking, this is May 85. And <sighs> honest to God, I was sitting here just thinking, we've just been beaten by Burnley away. Our manager Sam Allardyce, <laughs> and I'm literally watching. I'm just. I was just. I was just like. Like we're talking now. I, I just. I was just like. Oh. May eighty five though. We we got beat by United in the cup. No, final, but but we, we just had we to settle. We were drunk. For, we just had to settle for the league and yeah. the cup when it's cup. The players were all drunk. Two out of three ain't bad. And it didn't mean drunk. We might have won. That was what the thing no. was. If we'd have had two more days, and so then, so then I got on the fucking PlayStation, didn't I? Put the put 85. 85 team on the start of it, and up, mate. Oh. Oh. Steve, I know what I've got. No, I've got a front. Can you name me? Well, bet can you name me team? Obviously, Shalpol. Let's be the main team, surely. Shalpol, Stevens, Van der Yeah. I haven't even seen the squad, so I'm just, just gonna on. guess it. So Ratcliffe. Yeah. Now, have you gone Watson or Manfield? I can't not go Mountfield, can I? Okay. Go on. All right. So, Tricky, Kevin Sheedy, V. Bracewell. Yeah. So, it's your front two. Yeah. Going 4 4 2. Go on. I think you've gone Sharp and Lineker. I have gone Sharp and Lineker. I've gone Sharp and Lineker. Andy Gray and Heath on the bench. Mm. Andy Gray. Nathan Heath. Agent Heath. Richo. Richo. Paul Power. Power. Uh, I picked the squad as well, by the way. Uh, Wayne Clark. Oh, Clark! You got Wayne Clark in there, goals. Um, goals, Mr. Goals. They're all strikers. Yeah. Bales strikers. is on there. No, he's on the bench. He's not. Yeah, yeah. He's not on the bench, yeah, isn't yeah, yeah. it? Um, Waggy. Waggy's in. He, he had to play because Rats got sent off against Liverpool in the cup. Um, Harper. Harper's in there. Bobby Mims. Paul Wilkinson. Wilco. I think that's it. The lad, he lad, put one last in there. He was in there and I just said, "Oh, Snods as well." Oh, Snods. Snods is in there, Snods and I just said to the lad, he was like, "Put Aspinall and like a couple of, like Kevin Langley." I was like, "No." Nah. Stuart Stora. Yeah. Kevin Langley was good. Yeah, I know. He had a good little spike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I just spell. went, "No, cut. there's too many." I said, "There's too many." But it's good. Man. But what's my? He done this. Like, he done the good thing, bad. and he was like, "Paul Power's better than Van der Nelde." No. But I can't be asked that. Can't use your status. You can't, you know. Make it real. What's it? Uh, I think Nev's like about eighty-five. Sheed's free. Ned kick. should be a hundred. Nev. Sheed's free kicks are about ninety-three or something like yeah, that. As I said, and that's the one thing. I think Lineker might need to be a little bit faster. Yeah. Because people forget how fucking fast Lineker, Lineker was. Rapid, mate. He was just like, what's the goal he scores at Anfield in eighty-six? The fucking the root the ground he makes up is incredible. What's the goal he scores against? Luton in the Tony FA Cup. Tony Gobert. Just look at his pace! <laughs> the foot the Luton game in the FA Cup, but he played the ball, he yeah, just man. leaves them for dead. On the thigh, bang goal. I was in the glass seat that night. Beast I was in the low, but the night game. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that was eighty six. Eighty six. Night game a good How did we get in on, on in the first game? Uh, was it one one? We get beat two now. Twelve minutes oh, left. I can't eight and eight on. Two, 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 two. Uh, and his yeah. goalie took it on his chest and just stabbed it into yeah. the corner on the plastic So beach. what was it, 86? 86, yeah. Night game in what? Mm, February, March? Or was it Eight. later? Uh, March, late March, yeah. yeah. Freezing. So I was, I was seven years of age. I was in the Lord Bullens. In the Gladys Street, on the bar. Probably freezing. Free, it was, it was just freezing. watching night. Everton being boss. Can't. You, you can't buy that. Look, can't. For, look for Everton for Man City nil on YouTube. You just look at Gary Lineker's hat trick. Oh. Go under pressure. That was a night game. Go under pressure yourselves by watching Everton in the eighties. It will mm. make you feel so depressed. That we threw it all away because our chairman was a Tory, and this is why I hate Tories. And this is why you can't be an Evertonian and a Tory. Stop it. You can't. You can't! They kicked us out of Europe! Stop it! You wait for didn't even kick us just, out of Europe! You're fat you did! That, there you have it! Let's go! See you later! Goodbye! Love Tories. Great Tory! <laughs>